What's up guys? You might know that I love barbecue. I've been to some of the best places in Texas, in Kansas City, and North Carolina, South Carolina, all over the country. You're not gonna believe this. One of the best barbecue restaurants I've ever been to is right here in the Chicago suburbs. Let's go check it out. It's locks. Unlock it. Let's go. We are here at Chicago Culinary Kitchen in the Chicago suburbs, one of the best barbecue restaurants in the Midwest, if not in the country. Let's check it out. They ate too much meat. This place is rad. The legend, Guy Fieri. Hello, I'm uh, here to meet Greg. Hey guys, what's up, Greg? I'm John. John, I'm Greg. Hey, Pleasure. nice to meet you. Uh, this is my buddy Thomas. He's gonna be filming. Hey man, good to see you too. Good. You're in barbecue, meat, grill, and all that stuff. So I just share all the things I'm passionate about, and we talk about that and live stream it. This is gonna be so. Jake, this guy's awesome. Will you make him an old fashioned, and I'll have a gaffe. Uh, just so you know, please. He, uh, he is making fun of Thomas quite a bit. The editor here. That's okay. That's that's okay, brother. You want a milk or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. He's only 20. Well, right. well done. My friend, cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for coming by. This is a delicious old fashioned. It really is, right? What are you sipping on? I am drinking a uh, Gaffel. This is a uh, Kolsch. This is a uh, German beer. We're here at Chicago Culinary Kitchen. Tell me a little bit about the story of how this thing started. We started in our backyard just cooking, and you know, we would have people over, and it just got really hectic at home. Like, hey, you make good food. And like, I, I guess it just started out slowly. You know, we, we said, hey, we can make a go of this. I'm like, let's start doing catering. So we started doing catering, and honestly, one thing led to another then, and here we are today. I just found a passion and a love for it, yeah. of, just, of just doing it. It's a very, you know, you need patience for it. It can be very humbling at times because, you know, you're like, hey, I just hooked all these briskets and they turned out like crap. You learn very quickly, you know, how to uh, how to make things work. That's incredible. And it's so cool. You guys do. One of my favorite things uh, was during Lent, you were doing some lobster rolls on Fridays. Yeah. Oh, my. Like, nobody thinks of lobster rolls when they think of barbecue necessarily. And you guys knocked it out of the park. So we'd smoke the butter. What? Yeah. So we would take the butter, put it in the pit overnight, get smoke on it, low heat, so that butter picked up. Because that lobster base will take almost any flavor on besides the lobster flavor. You're speaking my language. So yeah. I'm a huge butter fan. We actually make a joke of it on my stream all the time because I love butter so much. I take little nibbles of it every once in a while when I'm cooking. I, I'm obsessed. Like, there's a whole bunch of different ways to, to smoke meat, right? People, some people, you like charcoal, you got wood fire pellet grills, you got a green egg, uh, you got regular wood. You know way more than I do about yeah. that whole thing. What's your take on, is there a best way? Do you think wood fire pellet grills are kind of cheating or? Wood fire pellet grills are great for beginners, right? Okay. Especially if you have like a, a Yoder or a Traeger or something like that because really it's set and forget it. Yeah. As long as you don't forget to put pellets in it, you're good to go. But the smoke is different. The smoke isn't as prevalent as it would if you're using regular wood. Okay. So like our pitch right now, uh, kiln cherry, the wood is what gives the meat the flavor. And then we have, it uses natural gas for the heat source then. The wood makes it become incense then for meat then. And so you would say it really does, the wood actually really does matter, right? You go to the store, you see all these different pellets and different kinds of wood and you think that if it's really good and done well that it matters which wood you're using i do i do because there's you know there's other woods that blend well with other woods apple and cherry go together you know where if you're just using straight oak straight oak that might have a different flavor as well what is it that separates you guys chicago culinary kitchen from other barbecue spots and then other restaurants as well uh, we talk, besides other barbecue spots i would say number one it's our attitude number two we really don't cut corners when it comes to our proteins i mean barbecue is a labor of love and it's it's expensive. Meat's at an all-time high right now. Yeah. But we're using quality products. If you give quality products, quality people will come here. The people that don't want it or don't understand it, they just won't come here because they're used to eating lower quality barbecue then. Let's take a walk around the place, give us a tour, and maybe let's dive into some barbecue tips on how you guys do this thing. Okay, let's go. All right, man. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Welcome. 
welcome to the uh, heart of the operation here. These are just some of the different spices that we have back here. I know I've had a lot of people come in and go, "Why, if you're a barbecue place, why do you need all these spices? Well, yeah. you never know what we're gonna cook or I have oh, a wild hair and it's like, hey, I wanna cook this. I, I wish I would have that spice for that. So sure. we go from anywhere from Asian to Middle Eastern. We're all over the board. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, so we come this way. So these are all three of the pits. They don't particularly have names. So these are all smokers down here. As you can see here, this is where the wood goes in. Wow. So this is pastrami and okay. this is corned beef. Oh. And this will be for tomorrow then. Okay. Oh my gosh, this smells amazing. So this is the big rotisserie. Okay. So these will these will rotate. And what does that do? Does it make sure everything's being evenly cooked? Yeah, so it's evenly cooked, so we'll put all we'll blue briskets and ribs in here. Okay. So what's nice is that any kind of drippings will drip down on something else then and help to keep everything nice and moist here as well. Oh, so we have that nice moist environment. We'll put water in the bottom of this as well because smoke um, likes to stick to water molecules. Okay. So that's why we try to keep everything nice and moist in there so that it's a very humid environment. That is so cool. And then if we open this one over here, with so this is the heat that will go, it'll travel on and off throughout the evening. Okay. And basically we put the wood in here then and we'll stagger the wood in here so that the wood actually doesn't, we don't want the wood to burn up all at one time. Yeah. We want to take its time and slowly smoke and smolder. That's what we want to give the flavoring in here as well. Okay. And then this will cycle on and off. And so yeah. the wood just reminds you smoke. That's all it's for then. Wow. That's incredible. What's your take, my two brisket questions. What's your take on fat side up or down? I've heard that the fat couldn't see through up top, but I've seen that that maybe not be true. Well, we always go fat side up. If we put fat side down, it likes to stick to the bottom of that rack. Okay. And then when you pull it up, it doesn't look beautiful anymore then. Yep. Plus I have those marks then on the top of the brisket versus having it on the bottom where nobody's gonna see it anywhere. Sure. It's not really coating the brisket, if we think about it, right? Oil and water. What is meat made of mostly, right? Yep. 85, 90, 5% water, right? Yeah. That's a muscle. It's fat and water, they don't mix with each other. So that really, that fat's gonna just melt over it. Where the fat comes important is that marbling that's inside that brisket. Yeah. That's what we want, is that marbling. That's why we're using prime briskets, because that inner muscular, that, that, that fat that's in that, that's what's gonna melt, and that's what's gonna give us that nice, unctuous, moist brisket that okay. way. Okay, and yeah. in your opinion, does it matter what you wrap it in? I see a lot of people online saying oil's fine, and then other people saying that that, uh, that well, paper let's, is better. If we wrap it in foil, the brisket is basically going to just braise that, right? Okay. Because there's nowhere for that to escape, right, when we're wrapping it. That's why we wrap it in the peach paper. We'll wrap that in the peach paper so that moisture can escape, but moisture stays in there as well then. Okay. So that's why we do that. So you're team paper. I am team paper. We'll wrap it in a cellophane. Um, when it comes out of here, we'll put some beef fat in there as well, and that will hold everything together really nicely. That this is all grill area stuff down here. So this goes. This, this takes about somewhere about an hour. What we'll do is we'll get smoke on here. We'll cook this to about 110 degrees. Okay. And then we'll put it on here, get some more heat on here. And then this steak's gonna be medium rare. It's gonna be, it's it's perfect every time this way. Oh, wow. So now we're just getting our char here. And there's nothing more than just simple salt and pepper on here as well. Genius. And how long did you say you smoked that for? This is about 45 minutes or so, give or take. Okay. Right in there. What, another thing that we're really good at doing is taking underutilized pieces of meat. Sure. And using that, whether like today we have the, the pork shakes, you know, all kind of different stuff like that. The problem with, with with the restaurant is that every backyard barbecue guy, once they find something, then they make my price go up. And that's probably what happened with tri-tip, right? It is what happened with tri-tip. Like beef tongue is, I mean, who find beef tongue? Nobody. Now beef tongue, $10 a pound or something, you know? And yeah. It's one of the weirdest things ever. You yeah, know? it's perfect. Let's, let's get you something to eat. All right, my friend, let's do it. All right. He's driving, so I'm okay if you're, if oh, you're okay. You got, what do you got, your permit? <laughs> this guy reaches out to me at 15 years old. He's got a deep voice now. He's like, hello? Can I edit your YouTube videos? You have to keep some of this in there, dude. What are we doing here? Well, that's your dinner. Small tomahawk, 18 hour pit beeps. They're effing mac and cheese. And this is our pork butte, brisket, garlic fries. Unbelievable. And what? Are, and we got some salt. We got salt and then horseradish for your steak. Oh my goodness. What do you think I'm supposed to eat all this? Yeah, go. You got one more thing cup. You know, today, you got also put the, oh my gosh. So what is this? Pork shake. Pork shank. Unbelievable. 
That's an unbelievable bite. It's an unbelievable steak. How are you not eating that every day? That is a that is a top steak I've ever had. It's seasoned perfectly. It's salt and pepper. It's a, it's smoke. It's moist. It's perfect. It's medium rare. It's got a nice sear. This is okay. FN mac and cheese. Diego, will you give me a hat? What cheese are you using in the mac and cheese? So there's three cheeses in there. Merck's? Yeah, it's Merck's. Merck's. Cheese. Shredder cheese. Wow. But that's a perfect bite. We have more shake here. What's for the people at home? This is what part of the pork? This is a fibula. The fibula? Yeah. It's so delicious part. It is. It's like silk. Oh my God, look at this. It's just pulling out. Perfect. How long does it take to smoke that? Overnight. It's just coming there clear. So this goes in stages then. So we'll take this and we'll season it and then we'll smoke it. So we'll get it to about 135. Take it out, then we'll wrap this in banana leaves and also add our cochinita of the bill. We'll add our marinade to it as well then. Wow. So then it's gonna braise overnight in the banana leaf with the cochinita of the bill with that marinade. This is to kind of coincide with the, uh, the meat spots you got going on there. Fried Brussels sprouts, the sweet chili sauce, and what we call crunchy. Okay, so hold on. This is where it's gonna get controversial. My grandma's from Georgia, and she's a really good cook. I've tried Brussels sprouts from Emeralds and Guy Fieri's restaurant, and my grandma's, and I've never had one I've liked yet. So if this hits, I'm gonna bet. I'm gonna take bets on this. It'll be the first bite of Brussels sprouts. This will, in my my community will lose their minds if I like this. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna take bets. You think I'm gonna like it? I think you're gonna lose it. Uh, I'll put this, this whole thing, huh? Go. Proof that God is real if I like this, okay? <laughs> it's delicious. How'd you do that? Why isn't it bitter? It's the only Brussels sprout I've ever enjoyed. It's delicious. I'm gonna have another one. All right, what are we doing here? Yeah, don't, don't. You do it yeah, I mean, that's what's gonna happen. Cheers. That's unbelievable. With the Victoria? What kind of meat is a burger? The brisket, brisket. chalky. There's nuggets. Sure. But you have such a robust menu like this. How are you so efficient with all of the different menu items as a restaurant owner? It's taken a lot of time to learn how to do that, to be efficient. That's the key. That's the art form, you know, in any restaurant. How to make the team work, right? Yeah. How to make what is in my head translate to come out at the end the same way. So here we have a peanut butter cake with peanut butter M&Ms and the peanut butter okay. cake. And what's going on here? Let's just get right in there. Have a hard life. Yeah, that's sinful. Chicago Culinary Kitchen, thank you so much for having me. You have been beyond hospitable. The food was unbelievable. The atmosphere, incredible. So thank you. Thank you, sir, for so everything. Much. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming out. Yeah, and anything you want to share, where can people find you? Uh, you can find us right here <laughs> at 2391 North Hicks in Palatine, and here's our hours of operation. Rock and roll, my friend. Rock and roll, man. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go.